now we will start to break down what champions are made of. No doubt, no doubt. And here's the thing, man. We are broadcasters. We've been watching and covering these games, and if already we feel some fatigue, what more these players? Yeah, oh especially for the side of Bren. Yeah, Bren has been playing ever since 11 a.m. Oh my goodness, yeah. you're absolutely right. An absolute it's, marathon. It's been 12 hours already. Yeah, <laughs> since they woke up, you know, like now, of course, this is the final match of the evening. Wherever you guys are currently tuning in from. The M2 World Championship will draw to a close after this sort of takes. Of course, we've already seen a few things here. Esmeralda, ban. Matilda, ban. No Diggy, no Yishin Shin. Boys, what are they going for in this match? At is this point in time... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bones. Is it still B going to be the Claude? Because that is... Is, this, is it still going to be a Claude ban? Because... The truth is, if you let it slide, Burmese Ghouls, that is an auto pick for the first uh, first phase of pickings. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if you give the Claude to this uh, to Burmese Ghouls, then probably you can just get two power picks on your side and just try to adjust from there. Well, let's see what it's going to be because the Burmese Ghouls are going to be opted. Hey, guess what? Brody and Claude on the table, up for grabs for either side. So no matter what, the Burmese Ghouls have to choose one. And I'm feeling like they're going to lean more towards that Brody after that, uh, after their previous game in Game 6, getting absolutely uh, destroyed by the amount of scaling this particular hero has. And there we go. It's going to be the Boxia as well as the Claude. Hmm, at least they're getting the Claude coming in. So it's kind of like a trade-off in this sort of sense. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that Leo has to say about scalings coming in. Yeah, no, Burmese Ghouls, they're getting it in spades. After the Brody, they get the Lunox. They're waiting for one more lock-in. And if I were to read Brenny Sports' draft right, they have to focus on Lusty next before Banning comes in. And right now, Burmese Ghouls, they feel Lapu-Lapu. It's been a while since we've seen Lapu-Lapu. Mm-hmm. I think they really are going to try and help this Lapu Lapu as much as they can if, uh, if it does go in towards that Boxia lane. Oh. And I mean, it's only natural for Bren to say, hey, Lux, Lux, uh, Lusty, you've been doing such a good job on this show. Take it again. As we move into the second part of the pick ban phase here, this is going to be pretty difficult because both sides are lacking in certain areas. Another offlaner is missing. Is missing. Their junglers have been pretty much decided. The support's kind of still up in the air. Yu Zhong could be a ban here for the side of Burmese Ghouls. Like, you pick a Lapu Lapu. Yes, you would want to head up against a Yuzhong Lapu Lapu setup that's going to be 50 50. But if he does have the Baksha on his side, that makes all the difference. That's definitely something to ponder about. And, you know, there's still a few more bands to also consider about. Silvana, past few games haven't been prioritized at all. So, do you think there's a possibility for that as well? Yeah, Burmese Ghouls might. Just because Lusty is on his choke. Yeah, I would think that they could go just for like a full-on pick composition for the side of Bren, but I feel like it's more likely that Bren is going to ban. They, they ban out the draw head, so obviously the Sylvana is going to become close second here because, again, that's how the tier list goes when it comes to these supports, especially on tournament meta. Both ultimates super, super effective. So now maybe is left hanging. Maybe is wondering, what am I going to play next? What other tanks or... Similar heroes can he play, and so far Burmese Ghouls have seen success when they are put up against the wall like this. Last ban from the Ghouls is going to be Farsa, and Burmese Sports have one more. Ooh, looking like a great side lane, Aerith. It's Few who still does not have a hero here. Yeah, and I think Few is kind of okay with this. He's got a plethora of option, uh, plethora of options overall. I mean, they're not exactly the best, may not necessarily be the most meta, but the Burmese Ghouls here, if they could limit him even more, because they've been trying to match him pretty much the entirety of the game. They've been matching Brent Esports in their draft. So if they can narrow down on what exactly Few wants to take and put him in an uncomfortable spot, they might be able to abuse. Mm, Burmese Ghouls, they need a tank and a gold lane. Will they go for a double marksman? Double risky. marksman could... is risky, but could be... Oh, oh. oh boy. The hard counter for oh the boy. What? Wow. Wow. At the last possible moment, 
Burmese ghouls, they still have something up their sleeves to surprise us. <laughs> hey, if you're gonna win a championship, you need to be unpredictable. You, gotta, you need to bring a king yeah. in. And you gotta be styling. I mean, this is pretty interesting because it's working similarly to Diggy, where it's just going to shut down the mobility coming in from Bren Esports. They have a very clear escape mechanic with this. And Bren Esports, they have no way to really get in onto the fight except for Boxia, and he won't be able to get out. So tight corners, what used to be Bren Esports' favorite place in the world, now Burmese Ghouls will start to dominate here. They do have an in. If they get it right, the diversion from the Luoyi, but it's so high risk. It's so high concept at this point. Exactly. Tight, narrow and jungle. Nah, don't fight there, Brett. Burmese ghouls, if you look at it, if they don't finish the game early, the scaling is going to favor the side of uh, the Philippines, Bren Esports. Yeah, I honestly really like this Loyi. We haven't seen that Loyi in a while now. Now, paired with this box, you can definitely go even more places that the box here could not reach. So with that being said, this is our very final game. It is best of seven in the M2 World Championship 2020. Who will be your champions right here? Pop it in the chat. And if you guys are in the cinema, make sure you scream it out loud. Is it Burmese schools? Is it Brad Esports? Back and towards the land of Tom for our last match here. Casters. It's been a long day, but we need a champion at the end of the day. We do need a champion. Burmese Ghouls, Bren Esports. One last game. One last showdown to show who is going to be sitting up here on top. Bren on the red side, Burmese Ghouls on the blue. As they take this nice and slow, they don't go with a buff start and immediately look to clear the mid wave. And, you know, overall, as we were kind of talking about how the matchups are going to go, we can already see uh, how the lane priorities have been given over oh. to either side. Again, Ruby DD with the rogue off meta pick, Grok. This is the lethal Grok. In game seven. Ooh, it's risky, but we've seen it work before. And now the question really does come down to whether all oh, they get a catch on to few for now. It's looking pretty good, but now Flap's easy. Going in a pretty hard, but kid, nobody having the execute at the end of the day. So they're not going to go for the dive. Okay, so the Luyi pick on few will just keep people from Burmese ghouls. Let's say poked as much as possible. The damage is uh, the damage will be consistent. So Burmese ghouls, there might be times here when they are going to take objectives that they would just opt to go for that just because they don't have full HPs. It's not even just about the full HP. Yeah. It, really do, it really does come to, down to who is going to win this level 4. And it really it, it is leaning more towards the Burmese Ghouls, but under specific conditions here. Because Bren Esports, overall, you look at their composition, it's like, yeah, this makes sense. They go in, they take the fight, full mm -hmm. team fight, plenty of AoE damage, lots mm -hmm. of magic damage, got a pick, got a Lusty with that pick. It's it's almost perfect. But then you look at Burmese Ghouls, and you see the King's Calling, and you're like, ooh, that's, uh, that's kind of a problem. Because if we count the number of mobility uh, skills, and uh, spells coming out from Bren, that's at least four of them. Actually, uh, that's at least four of them, yes. Yep, yep. So again, great read here by the Burmese Ghouls playing the reactionary lineup despite being on blue side. The genius mind of Coach Panda here in action. Now, Turtle started here by Ace, and he's going to put a few beads on it. Again, Brody doing well for Bren Sports in game number six here, game number seven. How the tables have turned. Now the fight has begun inside the river. Order Brilliance now popped here by Kid. He wants out. That's one ult counted down for each side as the Poissons is in for Flap TZ. They disengage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm I mean, Kid can't switch over the Chaos Darkness anyway, so still he is going to be relevant in this turtle fight. Games take longer, then that means it favors the side of Fred. Now, oh, oh! Look at that magnet, the yin and the yang. Hold the up, version hold up, is there. Hold up, here we come. Bren, oh, fakes it. They're going to continue the fight, though, up north. Phew, first blood. Oh. Here comes D. He starts it strong. That's going to be a disengage. And now, Bren is disincentivized for going into this first turtle take. Hold up, they still want more. That's going to be called easy. Blazing duet out of here. And, yeah, it's a push and pull.
Yeah, it really is. And Fuel, unfortunately, making the mistake. He tried to fake it out with the rest of his team, especially with that fast rotation coming in from Brent Esports. And the rest of the team wants to get in. Now, Flaptizi, he jumps right on top of the kid. He drops out the Toys Poisson, as well as the Rejuvenate in hopes that Lusty gets in time. He flickers on backwards, kicks back, ace into the fight. The King's calling his up, but the damage has been done. Lord, he did get double kill so early into this game. Oh, Fuel! He's so close to dying, doesn't get hit. But an just bear, but he gets hit by the wild charge at the end of the day. Rubi DD, the next to fall. Oh, huge win for Bren. Mm, and Bren Esports, they are finding the trades. Burmese Ghouls not backing down. And you could see a lot of things working to the side of uh, Bren Esports there. The kick on Ace was perfect. That's just what they needed mm -hmm. at that certain point in time. Mm -hmm. The exact target. Now, quick item check before the five-minute mark. That's already tough boots onto Lusty. Carl Tizi picks up the Raptor Machete. He uses the ult to disengage. That's two chasing down onto him. And look down bottom. This is actually some pressure onto Ruby DD. I think Renny Sports have had it with this surprisingly lethal Grok. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. This is the first time that we see him hugging the turret. I mean, this. I mean, they have to make sure that he doesn't get too far away here. Because again, Grok with the power of nature, very annoying. Oh, he gets hit by a lot of bullies oh. here as well as the Chrono Finisher as well. But now they're trying to jump on top of Rebo. Oh, they almost catch him as well, forcing him to use uh, use the Purify and the rest of Burmese Ghouls. They pull back. Big place. Oh, Fatizi, what happened? One HP? I guess he was dueling with the two up top. And, Lapulunox. Uh, he calls it quits, yeah. Lapulunox oh. is just Hold way up. too good. Blazing the win by Carl mm. Brr, yeah, Down goes maybe. Kid can't answer back. Interesting entrance by Bren Esports. And right now, they're trying to go for this push. Looking for a conversion. Ace puts a few beads. Gonna be popping the Torn Apart memory from here on very soon now. Oh, nice wild charge here by Ruby DD. And they decimate Bren Esports from underneath the own tower. Three for none. The ghouls are feeling it. They are pouncing back. They're looking to really turn this into the brawl. And D, he knows that he has to throw himself under the fire. And Flapsy, he's gonna be dropping. Oh, he gets peeled nice back. Move. It's a great pull, but he does force out the Rejuvenate. And nobody can really deal with him thus far. Not enough damage. Can he get the Cyclone's Eye in time? He gets hit by the stun. Maybe steals the Cyclone's Eye, but Flapsy, he's like, nah, she'll Unity, and I'm rolling out. Okay, this is one of the things that Burmese schools is really good at. And Ruby DD, Ooh. they've been going for a lot of these. Uh, uh, what's the name of the ultimate of the Grok? Wild Charge. Wild Charge. Charge. This is for the longest time we haven't used Grok in the meta, and mm -hmm. this is the first time that he was used. Wild Charge with the Flicker. They've been using that time and again, and it's almost always certain that he's gonna be very near onto those rocks and just knock up the enemy. Yeah, and that's what's so nice about Ruby DD's build here. Nice knock up here. Oh, oh. what you? Summon force from underneath. In comes maybe the King's calling. Keep no. people down. No. That's, that's going to be Lusty. Oh my god, the tag team is in effect. Now, that's going to be few from the back line losing the kid. It's a duel. Mage on mage action. And that's going to be the wipeout on a two few. Oh. That's going to be the order brilliance away for kid. D take down here by Flaptizi. That's a small consolation prize. One for three. Big wins. Big wins all across the board for the Burmese Ghouls. They're very happy with this trade at the end of the day. They should be holding on for Bren Esports Burmese Ghouls. This is the this is going as the way they planned it. They get pickups, they get kills, they control the mid game, they make the most out of ace, mid game spike. That's it. Oh no. Mm. Kid gets caught in by Flap Teasy. And here comes Ruby DD looking for a target. That's going to be a miss, a rotation in by few. And this is Brainy Sports pressuring the lane. So far, so good for the Burmese Ghouls. They're winning these fights. But just the same, Brainy Sports are finding pickoffs where they can and pressuring the map. Look at this a push by Rebo. Yeah, they're literally, I mean, both sides are literally looking for those flanks, getting behind the tier one turrets and going for these heavy, heavy dives. But maybe that King's Calling is super effective against Rebo. Rebo has to be extra careful in that King's Calling. Purify ain't gonna save him. Look at the enchanted talisman even being used here for Rebo. And that is quite unusual because a lot of the Harrod side laners are going for the Calamity Reaper and the Feather of Heaven. Yeah, Flap Easy here senses something. Oh, nice pull by maybe. That's going to be the Tortoise Poissons. And as well, I believe the Revitalize dropping here. But already two 
big ticket resources gone for Brenny Sports. Well timed for the 32nd turtle coming up for Burmese Ghouls, the very last one. They'll have their ultimates at the end of the day. And I think and I did see Rebo actually purchasing uh, the Calamity Reaper first. So don't worry about that. The Talisman, Enchanted Talisman came in a little bit later. Lusty, he's going to be looking for an opportunity to kind of, you know, secure their position around the turtle. So they have first dibs for now. But uh, Ruby DD says hello to few and few. Now in, under a lot of scrutiny here, the King's calling down right in the middle of the lane here. Nobody from the side of Brent Esports wants to walk forward. So it's going to be a free pick with no returns. Maximum efficiency. That is the best use of King's Calling. You see how it fits the circle down the middle right so perfectly? And that's exactly what maybe is doing here. But hold up. What's this? A nice trade for the turtle. Brenny Sports lets it go. It's not a come in in time. But then again, you have to think about what oh, they did there. Oh, here we go. Wild charge by Ruby DD. What a bait. That's got DD taking him down. And the life bars are dropping. Flap DD shut down by Ace. And the fight continues. Where do they go? Zaman Force already expended here by Rebo. And that's both teams back and off. Lusty looking for more. And hold up, hold up. 10 to 7, 24K to 24K. This game is. Darn close, but the Burmese goals are up by one turret. Golden Staff is now up for Carl TZ, and you can see the trades. Ruby DD maybe is just playing the keep away game. He knows that if he stays alive, he can just keep on going for those pokes. Now, if you would look at the items, Lusty here with the Athena Shield, Rebo does have the Calamity Reaper with Enchanted Talisman. Enchanted Talisman on few as well. He's probably gonna go for something or of a, something of a Ice, oh, Ice Queen Wand or, uh, or a Lightning Cruncher or probably a Glowing Wand as well. Yeah, those are some pretty good shoutouts there, especially... Re oh, wait, oh. D, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna die here. There's nothing much he can do. He's gonna get run down, especially with oh. the amount of movement speed that he has. And Flaptizi just to secure the kill with the shield unity. But now, rotation is gonna be placed in the middle just so they can steal away the orange buff again. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, Flaptizi is gonna be, hey, I'm the carry now. Oh, actually, hit. that is the case. And now Kid gets caught in here. That's gonna be quite a hit from the back line as Ruby DD goes in with a wild charge. Maybe here, caught out Flaptizi in. Inside the turtle, uh, the purple pit, and that's going to be the back out. Oh, Ooh. nice knock up. Nice wave of the dragon, but they take off Flap TZ first. Lusty still in oh. here. Call DZ, blazing duet. He's trying to get one. That's going to be Kid, and they back out. Oh, nice power. Nice swing by Ruby DD, but it's not enough. Double kill here for Carl TZ. Two for one. Oh. And while that's happening, we have Rebo and Few going to the bottom lane. Oh. Oh, Lord's up, Lord's yep. up, it's free. Lord's up, and they stop, and they gate keep the Burmese ghouls from walking up forward. They made sure they uh, they teleported right in front of the base, making sure that they're standing on towards the top right side, just in case if D wanted to get a little bit more physical with them. But now they have the river crab under their side. Cartesi is kind of huge in these situations, and uh, as of right now, Ace he's got the burst damage, but Cartesi he's got some strong AOE. Remember the last time that they picked the Claude, he it was relying on Claude alone. The damage output came from him alone. Right now for Bren Esports, they have this insurance policy. They have Rebo and the Harris, and both of them will have to carry the damage of this team. Not to mention, Few just purchased the Necklace of Durant, and that's going to be very, very helpful, especially against Ruby DD as well as D. And uh, let's see how this fight is. It's about to occur. They want to look for that big engagement. Here we go, Lord at about a sixth of his health. That's going to be a reset. Flap DZ already pops here. The Poissons rolling out. And it seems what? like Ruby DD is going to be the first target. Oh, he goes for the swing, goes for the wild charge, and misses. That's a nice free pickoff for Bren E Sports. Nothing for Burmese Ghouls to take here. Hold up. They jump in. Oh. Nice pull out the Lusty. He goes down. Kid gets the kill. And they are going to be backing off one for one. Blazing oh. Duet. Blazing Duet by Carl DZ. Alongside his Alvin Force to keep them pinned down. That's going to be a double. Down goes Ace. Down goes Baby. D as well. Kid is the only survivor in this onslaught. Ladies and gentlemen, Bren Brand Esports have gone four for one. Let's go, Brand Esports. They see the King's Kong, it's gone. They run straight down and force the engagement onto the Burmese goals. And now will profit the Lord as well Kid. as a mid tier. Uh, oh my goodness, they should be able to get this. No, can they get this? Yes, oh, they got the oh, as well. Oh. The King's calling and really worked their way, but look at Carl DZ oh, trying to go for Kid. Yeah. He takes down Kid. No. Kid just falls right in front of his base and so far Brandy Sports are not 
acknowledging any of Burmese Ghouls' efforts to protect themselves. So far, I think the Burmese Ghouls, they are trying here to just bait Brenny Sports. Again, nice pulls by maybe so far, but I think Brenny Sports knows that as soon as the pull happens, they leave who's gonna die and then just disengage and then come back around. This is the whole rope that Burmese Ghouls have been using all series long. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that this is the first time we're actually seeing the Burmese Ghouls starting to really sweat against Bren. They're making some really unnatural mistakes, like similar to game one, but with Lord marching on through, they can't afford to lose their members. They have to break this Lord and they have to be able to protect themselves. But Bren, they want to force the situation. They're gonna be starting with the inhibitor down on bot side. Few taking a little bit of damage, but D wants to go even a little bit further. He's trying to get a few. He's trying to execute you, but instead he gets kicked on backwards from TZ now trapped all by himself in the King's Calling. Rebo gets pulled on in. He's trying to get on out of there. Maybe flickers forward, but now oh. this is where they turn oh. the tides here. Run Esports, the looking Oh my goodness! Is it! Kid is the only one left can he defend. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Esports are your M2 champions! From the lower bracket, they crawled out. Bren Esports are your M2 World Champions! With one perfect team fight, this is it. We're gonna pass it to our host to celebrate our winners itself. And well, this will be the end of our match, but now it's time for Bren Esports to go and claim what is rightfully theirs. The this pro hits out. Thank you so much from the caster's desk. This is us signing off. Thank you very much, Butters, Gideon Q, Leo, as well as Contra and Lysander. Can you hear them screaming? What an incredible series, an incredible M2. They are going to be looking back at the history books and M2, the closest best of seven you have ever seen in Mobile Legends history. Now, I'm pretty sure all over in the Philippines, they are screaming, Prang La Malakas. Congratulations, people. Congratulations. Congratulations, Philippines. Wow. All right. Let us catch our breaths for a while now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still watching us, this is not the end. We'll come back in maybe, say, half an hour with the live media interview with our champion team, Brand Esports. But of course, we do want to say a big thank you and congratulations as well. To Burmese Ghouls. To Burmese Ghouls. Thank you so much. Well done. Very, very good final they put up for us. A 2-0 lead from Bren, and then coming back to equalize at a Game 7. Yeah. Incredible game from both sides. A big round of applause at home for those two teams. You know, I, I almost want to say this. It might sound cliche, but I can hear the screams coming in from the Philippines right now. I'm just looking at our casters. There's everybody so happy. Wolf is on his laptop, updating on Facebook right now on the results that just happened. In just a while, we'll be presenting the awards to our champion team. But of course, the Burmese Ghouls, thank you so much. Please make your way off stage. We will see you in a while. Second place, though. Big round of applause, please, Big to people in the of studio. Applause. Second so place. Glad. Second place. Make your way down off stage. Make your way off stage. Make your way. Follow up. the floor manager. You know yep. what? Do follow the, do follow, do, do follow the marshals. Thank you so much, Thank you Burmese so much Ghouls. for putting up a great finals for all of us to watch back home as well as here in the studio. The, Man, I gotta say, the atmosphere in this studio, Joakim. Yeah, oh the gosh. atmosphere, emotions running wild. We have, of course, happiness and sadness. The higher you climb, the harder the fall. But of course, there can only be one winner. Of course, we got the prize, the presentation coming up in just a while. We're just waiting for everyone to be ready before we invite a few guests on stage to present the present. Lysander, you are invested in the game. How is it like for we you? We were all invested. I'm telling you, they are going to look back. One day, the analyst desk, they're always going to bring back M2. They say, remember M2, remember M2. There was this team that made it 2-0. And then there's the other team that brought it to game seven. There's always going to be a reference back to this M2. That's what I'm going to say. Yep. And uh, I, I, I hope they remember this. I hope this keeps up for M3 because this has been an incredible game. Now, to present the stay the medals for the championship team can we please welcome the chief executive of the singapore tourism board mr keith tan on stage please mr keith tan thank you so much for joining us thank you sir yes sir thank you so much 
Lysander, do the honors for the championship team for M2 World Championship. Your M2 World Champion from the Philippines, Bren Esports! I am now going to call up each of the players to receive their awards from our VIP. First up, we have Rebo. Woo! Round of applause for all these champions up on stage right now. Thank you. Next up, Carl TZ. And next, we have Few. Their tank, Lusty. And Flapteezy. Not forgetting their substitute players as well. Coco. As well as AJ. Definitely deserve their support as well. Congratulations to these players. And of course, the man that brought them all together, their coach and manager, Ducky. Waving the flag for Philippines. A great honor for all Filipinos at home. Mobile Legend history has been made here. All right. Now, teams, can we please have a picture of Mr. Keith Tan for the cameras right now? Let's all smile for the cameras. We'll give it maybe, say, six seconds for all your pictures to go down for the cameras. Smile with your eyes, boys. I know the mass are blocking those big, big smiles. A smile with those eyes, boys. Congratulations, you are champions! All right, we're just waiting for the thumbs up from our producers to make sure that we got the pictures down already. Thank you so much, Mr. Keith Tan, once again, the chief executive of the Singapore Tourism Board. Please safely make your way off stage. Now, for Brand Esports, can I invite you to just take a few steps back, a few steps back to give space for our next VIP coming up on stage to present the check for the final MVP. Member of Parliament and Skoga Patron, Mr. Melvin Young on stage, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Producers, we need some help. We've not been told the results. I have a good guess. Okay, I have a good guess. I mean, we have been all watching the games. It is, it is the best fencer at M2, the Lancelot Specialist, Carl TZ! It was top secret, Lysander. Top secret, that is an open secret. Philippines, you are, you have been so blessed with Carl TZ as your Lancelot Specialist has done so well across the entire M2 tournament. All right. Carl TZ and Mr. Melvin Young, could we have you in the center stage for a picture, please, of the camera? Carl TZ and Mr. Melvin Young, could we have you center stage for a picture? Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, Carl TZ. Show off your check. Show off your MVP yeah. check. There you go, Carl. You're going to remember this for a long time, my friend. You're going to remember this amazing moment for a long time. Everyone smile. We're waiting for the go-ahead. All the pictures to be taken. Front page news tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, in the Philippines and here in Singapore. I'm assuming we are done. Thank you so much once again, Mr. Melvin Young. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. And of course, Bren, it's about time. We're going to need two of you guys. All right. Bren Esports, can I have one on the left and one on the right to lift your plaque now? Bring it to the front first. We're going to do this on the count of three. All Bring right. it to the front. So, Ducky, take the plaque. Put it down first. Put it down. Take the plaque. Yeah, be careful, it it's, it's heavy. heavy. It's it heavy. heavy. It is heavy. Two people? Yep. All right, guys. Move it to the front. Take yeah, it down it to first. The front. Yep. Be all right, be careful with it, guys. All, all right. right, put all it right. down. All right, all right. Bring it to the front. Ducky, take a few steps forward, yeah, Brandy Sports. To the front. Okay. Joking, we're going to do this on the count of three. Like one, one, two, two three! three. We go. The champions once again, Brand Esports for M2 World Championships. Mobile Legends Bang Bang deliver one of its greatest finals ever. Lysander, I dare say, Brand Lang Malakas! Lang Malakas indeed!
Congratulations, Philippines. Well earned, well deserved. Lysander, it's an amazing week here in Singapore for the M2 World Championship 2020. If I do this, it's done. It's it over. It is done. It is done. One more last thank you yep. to everyone that made this happen. Moon Tom, thank you for an amazing grand finals. Thank you for trusting Singapore. Thank you to Singapore Tourism Board. Thank you to IMDA. Thank you to Skoga. Thank you to all our partners. To me, Secret Lab, Razor, Singtel, MediaCorp, KD Cinemas. All of you guys helped us put this together in spite of COVID, made it safe for everyone, allowed all of us to have fun, joke him. Yep. M2 has been amazing. I cannot wait for M3. Exactly. Now, don't forget, we do have the media coverage coming live in about half an hour's time here on this page. Ladies and gentlemen, he's Lysander. My name is Joachim. Thank you so much. This has been your M2 World oh, Championship 2020. Challenge far, far away. Thrill of the fight as we fight to survive for honor and glory, strong as a night. Nothing can break us down, we will all wear a crown. We are unstoppable, we're proud like honor and shield. We are are gone, the spirits remain, we're fighting the names, while victory awaits, we're invincible, let's take on the world, fight, fight for our lives, when the world collapses all around us, fight like a knight, join the fight, fight for our pride, never rock the strap for what you believe in, that's right, you know what I'm here.
Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lysander and Joe Kim once again. And we are here with the media interview for Brand Esports, the champions for M2 Mobile Legends. Bang, bang. And uh, well, the media has some pressing questions for our new champions, Joe Kim. Yeah, Lysander, but can I take a moment first? Woohoo! We're done, just like that, for M2 World Championship 2020. Just like what Lysander said, we are more or less the middleman between the championship winning team, Brand Esports, and the media that's about to ask them a few questions. So if you're still here with us, wherever you are on Facebook, YouTube, MeWatch, or even at Cathay Cinema here in Singapore, we say thank you very much. Of course, on our right, it's Brand Esports looking very comfortable on their secret lab chairs and awaiting the media to ask them questions. Without further ado, I think we have our very first one on standby already and I understand they are from Yahoo. Let's have Yahoo on the screen on standby. If not, maybe I'm gonna ask the first question first though actually. Yeah, if it's uh, possible. Well, are, are Yahoo ready? I don't yeah, think yeah. so. You know what? I'll, t I'll take the first question sure. then. Ducky, I wanna ask you the first question. Um, what did you say to the team before the final game? Not in terms of the game, but how do you motivate them to keep their belief up for Brand Esports? Okay. Uh, on Game 7, uh, I asked them, do you want to prove that we're not just strong in the Philippines? And then they said out loud, yeah. And then prove it. We have to win this last game. All right. Thank you very much, Ducky. Great now, answer. I believe Yahoo are on standby already, so let's have Yahoo on the screens. Yeah, this is... Uh... There he is. All right. <laughs> All right. So... Hello, I'm yeah, Kurt Lozano from Yahoo Esports Southeast Asia. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Bren Esports. And I think my first question would be, like, how did the team bounce back from their first loss to Burmese schools in the first round of the upper bracket? Like, how did you adjust mentally as a team and in terms of your gameplay as well? Anybody from Brand Esports with the question? Yeah. Um, yung unang talo namin sa upper bracket ng Burmese goal para sa akin kasi tanggap naman namin lahat na naging ano kami dun eh. Pag to, kampante kami. Kaya ayun yung napanish kami dun. Tapos nung... Na, natalo nila yung RRQ, nirespeto na namin sila, alam namin yung sobrang lakas nila, kaya pinagandaan na namin ng Grand Finals. Uh, you want me to translate or... Kurt? Oh, it's good. I can okay. understand. Thank you. All right. Uh, another follow-up question, it's, if it's okay. So, you've had like a very long oh, series sorry, sorry. against uh, We will need the translations for yeah, the benefit of our audiences at home. Yeah, well. Kurt, we apologize. Okay. Ducky, very quickly, just translate what, what he answered for us. Okay. Uh, versus uh, Burmese goals in the upper bracket, I already accepted the fact that we got complacent uh, versus them in the upper bracket. Uh, but with RQ Hoshi, though, uh, it was a different story because we wanted to prove that we're the better team. Thank you very much, Ducky. Now, Kurt, go away with your second question, sir. All right. So, obviously, you've had a very long seven game series against. Uh, Burmese schools. Was there one particular game that was like the toughest game for the team and why and how do you think you were able to overcome that game? Ano daw yung pinakamahirap na game uh, for you dun sa series ng versus Burmese schools? Uh, yung pinakamahirap na si yung pinakamahirap na series namin yung sa game yung game 3 Kasi tinry namin na magbigay ng hero so doon nalugi kami kasi hindi namin kinaya yung ano final nila. So for me, uh, the toughest game was game 3. Uh, we tried to trade out heroes but it goes to sh it, it went to show that you know they had a better core hero. Thank you very much, Ducky, okay. for translating. Kurt, thank you very much. Yahoo, we await to read thank your you very article much. very soon. Up next, I believe, we have One Esports. One Esports on standby. I believe maybe say a maximum of two questions per news outlet yep. for our championship team because we want to give them as much rest as possible. Not easy. Not easy coming off a week playing Mobile Legends Bang yeah, Bang. I muted myself. Oh, okay. Uh, I think uh, One Esports is ready. All right. One All right. Esports, One Esports sir, go for us? it. Hey, uh, hey, Brent Esports, congratulations on your win. Uh, I'm Joseph from One Esports. 
And my first question is, what does this championship win mean to Brand Esports and the region of the Philippines? Ah, yung ibig sabihin sa sa pagkakapanalo ng M2, sobrang laki para sa akin. Kasi simula pagpasa ko sa Prozin, gusto ko na talaga maging pinakamalaki sa buong mundo. So this is a huge win for me because when I uh, started in the pro scene, when I got into it, uh, I just wanted to be the best in the world. All right, your next question, sir. All right, my last question is, what was most challenging about playing against Burmese Ghouls in the finals? And what can you say is unique about their play style? Can, can you round up by me again? I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, what was most challenging about playing against Burmese ghouls in the finals, and what can you say is unique about their play style? So, nito naman na ano daw yung pinaka challenging na part ng pagkipaglaban sa Burmese ghouls. Yung yung pinaka challenging na part sa akin is yung pagda draft nila, kasi paulit ulit yung yung draft namin, kaya kailangan namin mag step up para manalo. Tapos yun, yung ginawa namin, sumugal kami ng sumugal hanggang sa manalo. Sugal lang ng sugal. So the hard, the toughest part for me uh, uh, playing when playing against uh, Burmese goals was their draft. Because they kept repeating their draft. Uh, so we had to like change things up a bit and step up. So, yeah, we had to like gamble with the way that we drafted all throughout the series. All right, thank does that your answer your question? Okay, awesome. Yep. Thank you, One Esports. Okay, so now uh, we have a little bit of time before our next upcoming media, EGG. Uh, and I want to ask you guys, Brand Esports, you know, I, I love it that Ducky was our first guest on the, on the discourse uh, discussion, and then now we're having another interview with you guys. So last year, uh, Evos got a skin made in their name. It was for Harif. Now, if you guys could choose, I, I have no power at all. I just want to know what hero would you choose your unique skin for? I, I just want to know. I'm, I'm curious. All right, they're discussing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, I mean, I have a guess what it will be, but uh, maybe they'll give me something weird. Yeah, let's go. Uh, the team decided that we wanted to get Cho skin. Cho skin. skin. All right, all right. All I, right. Let me let me just explain briefly. Let me just explain briefly. So we were talking just now, and they decided that you know uh, everyone should be able to use that skin, since everyone is uh, familiar in how to play the hero. So we stuck with Cho. Uh, he actually wanted Lancelot. Of course. Of course, yeah. Of was, course. <laughs> we know. But, but everyone on the team can play Cho, so you want a Cho skin yep. for the team. That's yep. that's beautiful. Okay, now moving forward, we do have the next media. Uh, EGG is on the line. EGG. Hi, guys. Uh, congratulations. I uh, just want to say uh, for my first question, was banning Diggy very important in beating the Burmese goals? Can you explain the reason behind it? Okay, so uh, we've had a uh, bad history with Diggy uh, since uh, in MPL season six they've been using the feeding Diggy strat so we got uh, we developed PTSD against the hero basically because it was just so frustrating to play it against and we and Burmese goals actually showed a different way how to play it and they they're really strong with it so it's very important for us to ban this Diggy because it seems that they really prepared with this hero. Okay. All right, awesome. Uh, just want to interject for a bit. Uh, guys, remember when you're replying, you don't have to look at the screen, look at the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, uh, just to clear it up. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, please proceed with the uh, next question. Second question. In the grand finals, you lost three games in a row before coming back. So what did the team do to reset before coming back to the win the final two games? Um, yung pinaka... Yung pinaka-reset na ginawa namin doon is yung nagba nagbago kami ng draft. Kasi nung last, ay, first five games, parang same lang yung ban namin eh. Tatlo lang eh. Kahit first pick or second pick, ganun lang binaban namin. So, binago namin yung draft namin, parang hindi na kami natakot. Kaya, 
Ayun, nagbunga naman. Worth it. So, uh, the very first uh, five games, uh, since the draft was repetitive, uh, we changed it up. So, you know, uh, they couldn't really predict what we're going to do. All right. Thank you very much, EGG. Hopefully that answer your question as well. We're moving on to our next media outlet to ask questions for Brand Esports. I believe we have What's the Matter on standby. Now, if you're joining us once again, wherever you are here in the world, if you've been following us for the past week, we say thank you for tuning in to M2 World Championship 2020. All made possible by, I dare say, the saying, it takes a village to run the entire show. Oh, yeah, for sure. We kept the guidelines yes. and everything here in Singapore. And there we have it. Yes, What's I'm the ready. meta on standby? We see you. Uh, hi, I don't have video, but uh, hi, Brand Esports, congratulations on your WD. Uh, just wanted to ask in M2, you have been facing too many teams around Southeast Asia and around the world. Uh, just want to ask who is your, like, the best or the best contender you ever met at with difficult meta? Yeah. Burmese goals. Ang um, pinaka the best namin na nakalaban yung Burmese goal. Kasi nilaglag kami nung upper bracket. Tapos nakalaban namin nung grand finals. Tapos nahirapan kami umabot hanggang game 7. So the toughest opponent the, or the most challenging opponent that we've had or that we faced in this tournament would be Burmese goals. Because uh, they dropped us to the lower bracket and they gave us all a really tough time in the grand finals. Okay, uh, right. do you have another question? Uh, maybe just want to ask, like, how does it feel to be not the best in the Philippines, but the best in Southeast Asia and also the world? How does it feel like to bring the name of Philippines to the world? Um, siyempre, ano, so, siyempre sobrang tuwa namin na nanalo kami and pinaghirapan talaga namin tong lahat and talagang sacrifice lang eh dahil sa COVID ang hirap, may quarantine din, ayun, sobrang saya namin talaga. Uh, I feel really <laughs> happy. Uh, with this win uh, because we really prepared hard for this. We have to sacrifice a lot. We have to go through a lot just to get this. Th all right, I think that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes. What's the matter? We'll see you soon. Now, Lysander, I believe you have a question before we bring on our next media outlet. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty uh, standard question. What are you guys going to do with the money? <laughs> Any 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 creative answers? I I, I know there's gonna be a couple of buy buy house for my mom, buy lunch, buy dinner, whatever. But anything interesting, anything creative out there? Uh, yung mawawala ko pera, bibigay ko sa family ko, lalo na sa mama ko at sa asawa ko, kasi para sa baby ko. At sa magnegosyo ganon para if ever na magquit tao after ng M2. May napundar na ako. I am probably going to give it to my wife and to my mom. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. All right. We got uh we got the next one. Hi Techno. Hi Techno. Take it away. Hi. My name is Reza from HiTechno.com. Listen for your written in esports. My first question is. What is the main mistake of Burmese so that you can win the second game? Uh, second game on the grand finals? Which, yes, which game? Second game. The oh, seventh, seventh, game. seventh game. Seventh game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I think the biggest mistake uh, from Burmese goals on game seven is they got too passive around the Brody. That's all. Your next question, Brody. sir. 
and you beat two Indonesia teams, Alter Ego and LRK in the lower bracket. How is the performance of the Indonesia team in M2? Is it below your expectation or is your team just too strong in your opinion? I believe Indonesian Indonesian teams are always at the top of their shape. So, uh, I mean, we've been screaming a lot with them. So we've been training against them all virtually every day uh, during training days, training weeks. I I personally think they're they're still strong. You know, given the chance to other teams like Bigatron. Definitely is one of the toughest opponents that we've faced in, in training. Also, Geek Fam Indonesia, uh, Onik Indonesia as well. So, all right. Thank you very much, HighTechno.com. We look forward to reading your article, and I believe the next media outlet we have is Esports.id. I repeat, Esports.id. They'll be on the screen in just a bit, asking their questions to once again the champions of M2 World Championship 2020, Mobile Legends Bang Bang Brand Esports. Esports.id. We'll see you on the screens. Take it away. Okay, hello guys. Brand Esports. Congrats. So, especially for Ducky because in previous interview I said that I'm rooting for Boomis Go. So you make me lose about ten dollars <laughs> for this match. <laughs> so my question is, uh, you have a very long game, right, with Arki and then with Boomis Go. Do you feel burnout between matches? If it, it, it is happen, when when it happen? And what you do? Um, sobrang hirap nung araw na to para sa amin kasi una sa lahat, late na natapos kagabi, kulang yung tulog namin. Maga kami nag-start eh kasi may lower bracket finals pa kami. Pero nakapagpahinga naman kami nung after nung lower bracket finals kaya preparado na kami nung grand finals. This was a very long day for us because last night we ended pretty late. You know, we had to wake up early since we've been, uh, we're, we, we're supposed to play at uh, 10 a.m. or we have to be ready at 10 a.m. So uh, we, ha we haven't really had enough sleep. So, and this day as well is a very long one for us, but you know. Okay. okay. Next question, sir. I have one. I have my last question. Do you have any message for your contender next year for M3? I believe that EVOS Indonesia would come out really strong again, as well as Bigatron. Ooh, okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much, esports.id, for all your questions. Now, Brand Esports, we have three more media outlets, three more before you can go rest and celebrate the night away with your win. Next up, ggwp.id. We'll have them on standby in just a while because we're loading, in up, loading them up rather for your screens. And if you're still watching us here, thank you so much for joining us. This is like them relaxed. This is the most relaxed I've seen them. Let's bring our friends over at ggwp.id online. Let's go for it, sir. Okay, thank you. And congratulations to Brent and Ducky. I choose Brent will be champion and you prove it. Okay, uh, my question is, in the last interview, you say that you will put your eyes on ace before the final upper bracket and you lose so uh, after that uh, are you uh, learn the all the player and how they gameplay or you may be focusing on your own strat or maybe you take a, take a rest and take a breath before the lower break all right so we considered a lot of factors but definitely how ace played uh with his matches that we watched uh, actually played a big factor so we realized that he was only playing at least two heroes the most so uh, at the latter part uh the grand finals we realized that we just have to bend them out or uh, you know take out uh, or let him play the heroes that he's not really comfortable with that's why we let him get his hands on brody Okay, and the second and the last question for me is, uh, you say again in the last uh, interview, uh, your player has a good mentality and good preparation and will be have a motivation more if play on stage and this grand final is on stage. Uh, that... But how if the uh, final or the M2 is play online, will you uh, have okay. preparation also and Player. Okay, I think uh, training and performance are two different things. Uh, training would definitely prepare. Preparation is 
definitely going to be on on our list on uh on top of the priority list right <clears throat> but you know playing online is totally different because if there are latency issues if there are latency differences that would play a, uh, a really big factor so it's gonna be a 50 50 I, i'd say all right yeah. all right thank you very much ggwp.id before we move on to our next outlet revival tv lysander you have a question for them yeah, all right. Uh, I'm going to get you guys to do something, uh, you know, I think it will be right. You know, Burmese goals, they put up an amazing fight in their grand finals. Uh, is there anything uh, you can say to their fans, to them, uh, about their play style? You know, encourage them. Something encouraging for Burmese goals fans back home. It was incredible, but there can only be one champion. Something nice. Okay. Uh, the last few days have been very rough between the Filipino fans and the Myanmar or the Burmese fans. Uh, I just want to let you know that we are all in good terms with these teams. And in fact, we actually exchanged jerseys with them. And I, I believe these guys are really nice guys. So I hope that, you know, you guys, you know, the Filipino, uh, the Filipino fans and the Burmese fans find it in their heart, you know, to make it so that we shall love to each other. All right, thank you so much, Ducky. Okay, now moving on to our next media outlet, Revival TV. You are on screen, but for inter interest of time, we're going to only have to give you one question, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, you, you can take a little time to take, pick your question and ask away. Okay, I'm Rafdi from Revival TV. Congrats for your winner in M2, Brandy Sport. Uh, I want to ask uh, the coach, Ducky. Do you think the Sin Esport Mobile Legend is very competitive right now? I, a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent competitive. All right, sir. We actually can allow you to ask one more question if you want to, to Brand Esports. Okay. Uh, last question is uh, uh, for Card Z. Do you have any music for Indonesian fans? Ah, thank you, sir. Some of our and guide yung iba ng babas. Thank you so much for supporting me uh, to all the Indonesian fans, uh, even though you have a different language. <laughs> all right, last but not least, okay. okay. Thank you so much Thank for you. your questions. Last but not least, we have Spin Esports, guys. We're almost done. Uh, just one more media outlet to go. Spin Esports, are you there? We're give, giving them some time to all load right, right. on the so screen. They're, they're loading in. Okay, um, later on, guys, I want you guys to give me a nice heartfelt message to your Filipino fans after this. So just think about it, all right? So we have Spin Esports on the line. Yeah, hello. Hello, Brandy Sports. Congratulations for being the winner of M2. Yeah, my name is Talia Karisma from Spin Esports. And my question is, which Indonesian player in M2 do you respect the most, Brand Esports respect the most? And do you have any message for them? Uh, para sa akin yung pinaka respect ko sa Indonesia na player si Leo Morphy kasi sa lahat ng tank player siya lang yung naging idol ko talaga sa Indonesia So the player that I respect the most in Indonesia is Leo Murphy because he's the only player that you know I looked up to when I started playing Mobile Legends Wow amazing stuff wow. nice. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, right. Spin Esports. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, so now that is all the uh, media outlets and their questions. Guys, I just want you guys to uh, go to the, uh, look at the camera and tell your Filipino fans back home that are just so proud of you. What uh, Something. Something you want to say. A heartfelt message. You know, give, give them something good. You gonna see something? Let's have the camera on Brand Esports as they address yeah. their home nation of the Philippines. Ah, uh, nag nagpapasalamat ako sa mga sumusuporta sa Pilipinas na hanggang una hanggang dulo andiyan pa din kayo na sumusuporta sa amin. Na appreciate namin yung pagsusuporta niyo sa amin. Yan lang. Could you help us translate that, Ducky? I want to say thank you very much to all those people who supported us up until this point. Uh, I wish we made you all proud. Lovely. 
We are very sure you've made them proud, Brand Esports. Thank you so much for being patient with the media. Big round of applause for everybody here in the studio, the production crew, cameraman, everyone who made it possible. Want to say a big thank you to our friends over at Singapore Tourism Board, Skoga, IMDA, Secret Lab, Razor, MediaCorp, Cathay Cinemas, all our partners and supporters. Thank you so much. Take care. Lysander, Joachim Gomez saying good night, good fight. See you at M3.